uh, I'm happy to tell you about the MSc in Advanced Computer Science, and I've called this why and how. Most of it is is going to be about why you would ap apply to the MSc in Advanced Computer Science and a feel for what the program is about. And then there'll be a little bit at the end about how you would get in, very little at the end. Uh, so first, I, I, I want to say maybe something that's obvious, you know, why Oxford University? Uh, well, of course, there's things you already know and things you've heard in previous talks. You know, it's one of the greatest universities in the world. There's unique setting and you, unique history, uh, unique college culture. Uh, you'll meet amazing people here. But I, I wanted to talk about it a little bit more from the point of view specifically of a CS master's student. Uh, this this culture of Oxford is particularly relevant for master's students that you'll as a master's student be assigned to a college or through a through a certain process. And the college is a place where uh, you'll have a cohort that cuts across computer science and every other discipline. So you'll, you can participate in college activities as much or as little as you like. There's nothing mandatory uh, about it. And you, we get all sorts of responses to colleges and there's different kinds of colleges. But the, this is a place where interdisciplinary act activity happens, which you don't see at other colleges. You'll have this cohort that includes people from basically all walks of life, all subjects. And this is something that makes ma a master's program at Oxford pretty exciting. So suddenly I, I want to talk uh, uh, about uh, Oxford the city. Uh, well, you probably know a lot about Oxford the city. Uh, you've seen it on TV. Uh, maybe you've been here as a tourist and know it's a beautiful place, a very unique place. But I wanted to get, again, think of it from the point of view of a, a master's student in computer science. Oxford is is now really a tech hub. Uh, there's a couple aspects to this. It has a big local startup culture. Uh, uh, and a lot of this is based on spin-offs from the university, including from our department. There's things like the Venio, Diff Blue, Semmel, Dark Blue Labs, Oxford, Semantic Technologies. Some of them, you know, just in the last year or two, they say. Uh, but there's also spin-offs that are relevant to computer science from many, many other departments. Uh, maybe many of you have heard in the bio space uh, and also in the engineering space. So this is very much uh, a place of startups. In addition, it's a kind of a happy hunting ground for uh, London recruiters and London is a big tech center within Europe. And so you have this great proximity, great access to London and further the people at the major companies and every big tech company, basically every international tech technology company would have a presence in London. They would be recruiting at Oxford. It's easier for them to get here. Now, the university has a lot of infrastructure that supports this kind of recruiting and interaction more generally uh, to entrepreneurial activities. The department has lots of activities that support this. And at the master's program specifically, we have activities that support interaction with, with enterprises, with businesses, not just about getting a job, but getting ideas for computer science to do. But normally we don't, this kind of thing happens really organically without that much of a push. There's people who you will interact with uh, who have ideas for companies that will be just naturally around Oxford, around the department. So uh, then uh, why Oxford Computer Science? Again, you've you've heard from Ben Morrell, you've heard from Jonathan, uh, many things about computer science at Oxford. Uh, it's one of the top departments of the world in many of the world rankings, many years running. It's got world leading research in to name a few, AI, verification, quantum, cyber physical systems, data and knowledge, programming languages, human computer interaction, security. But from the point of view of a master's student, what does that mean other than you know prestige? Well, it's really an organic part of our research oriented master's program. St master's students get embedded in research groups very soon after joining the department. So students typically start engaging in seminars, engaging with research groups pretty much on arrival here. During the taught course uh, course that's in the, the first two terms, um, uh, they will be engaging informally in research, maybe in, in reading groups. And then of course, in the project phase of the program where you're doing a thesis, you're completely sort of heads down into a, a research activity with leading researchers uh, in, in our research themes. 
So there's a tremendous amount of engagement, interaction, in, interpersonal interaction, uh, and also absorbing ideas that are around the department for master students. And that's something that you won't see uh, at many other top departments. I'll say a little bit more of the, about this uh, in the next slide. So lastly, I want to get specifically to the program. I'm talking about the MSc in Advanced Computer Science and say a little bit about why this program. And I, I want to talk about this from the perspective of someone who's pretty familiar with master's programs, well, in, in Europe, in, in the US, and in several other countries. And I, I want to talk about some of the things that I think distinguish the MSc in Advanced Computer Science. Uh, one thing that I think uh, is quite worth stressing is the small cohort. Uh, it's ranged between 45, 65 students. And by the standards of major research CS departments, this is really, really, really small. And you, you see master's programs at major universities, departments that you might have heard of with hundreds of students, a thousand students. And this translates into many advantages for uh, master students here. First of all, you'll get to know each other and you'll get a huge amount of engagement with each other. You, and also you'll you'll be engaging a lot more with faculty. The ratio we to give an idea, we have 70 some or close to 80 uh, permanent faculty in our department. So the ratio of, of master students to faculty, not to mention postdocs, other kinds of research staff is extremely favorable. And this also reflects in the taught course experience to small courses, small problem classes. You're really having a, a huge amount of face to face time here that you wouldn't have in other programs. The second thing I'd like to emphasize is uh, flexibility. You see a lot uh, these days of specialized master's programs in, you know, uh, computer games in AI in game theory uh, in certain kinds of machine learning. Uh, you have convergent programs. This is a, a program which has a lot of flexibility in supporting students with many kinds of goals. Uh, many of our students come in, they they know that they want to do a, a PhD uh, and this is their their sort of bridge. Many of them know that they want to go into industry, maybe looking at a specific kind of technology company or, or a certain kind of entrepreneurial activity or social good activity that they want to get into. They have coursework in our program, but many of their students just don't know. Um, and our program, the way it's structured, I'll say a little bit more about this uh, in a second. It, it gives people uh, the ability to wait and see uh, and they can start out wanting to do, to use the program in one way and then end up using it in another way. We do have the ability now to obtain specialist credentials for people who know that they want to do things like about, say, quantum. They can get a specialization in foundations of computer science. If you know you want to do AI, you can get a specialization in AI. But the way we've structured this, you don't have to choose upfront. This is something that you can begin to take courses and quite late in the game, you can decide whether you, uh, you want to go for this specialization. The last thing I want to mention that I think distinguishes the program for better and for worse is its intensity. Uh, it's a one year program and you're starting in pretty much the day of arrival with computer science. Uh, there's the tort portion in, in the fall and winter term. Uh, courses are eight weeks. This is probably much more intense than what, what most of our students are used to from wherever they were, say, an undergraduate. Uh, and then at the end of the tort portion, there's the project portion, which is extremely intense. Also, you'll be starting the project, you know, April or May, uh, and you'll be going through to September 1st. So uh, we're talking about a program that packs a huge amount of computer science in uh, a 12 month area. And I think this is something that's very attractive for people who who really want to to get a lot in in one year. So to say a little bit more about this, uh, the first two terms is uh, coursework. People are getting, as I said, engaged with research teams during this time. They, they can be attending research uh, seminars, getting involved in research, but their main activity uh, for master's students in the fall and winter term is coursework. I give this list here of uh, courses we have for the fall term this year. And it's to give you uh, an idea of the range. There's courses that are quite applied, courses that are quite theoretical. Uh, they're covering a lot of the hottest topics, say quantum machine learning. They're also covering a lot of traditional con uh, context. So we have a wide range of courses, both in the fall term and also here in the winter term. So we try to balance the courses out by terms uh, so that uh, 
students usually don't find that all the courses that, that they want to take uh, that they're really keen on are bunched in one term. And yet uh, we're trying to offer courses that have a, a huge range of topics. So this is the end of the why portion. Uh, I hope uh, you're now super motivated uh, to apply to our program. And then I, I should say uh, something about how to get in. But of course, I can't really give you some magic bullet about how to get in because there isn't one. It's a lot about uh, what you've done, uh, a lot about the extraordinary things that you did before coming here. That's the, the magic uh, that's going to get people into the program. I'm not going to go through everything in the application form. A lot of it tracks closely with what Jonathan has said for the DFIL form. Uh, what people af ask me uh, often about is the personal statement. There's a personal statement, uh, again, like one and a half pages, I think, uh, kind of you know, the same sort of length as the research statement that, that Jonathan was saying. There's no magic recipe for a good personal statement, but I'll give you a little bit of advice. Uh, First of all, uh, the, the information in the personal statement is meant to supplement the information in the rest of the application. And we do uh, read the entire application. And so, of course, you can emphasize something that you did that was extraordinary and put it even in, in bold face. But you don't need to spend a, a lot of time saying, I got high grades in blah, 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 because we're going to read your transcript and we'll know that. You don't have to spend a lot of the application space uh, talking about maybe a particular accomplishment or a particular award. We'll know that. We'll see that in your CV. So you're supplementing the information in the application. What is a good thing to, to do to supplement it? Well, one thing that you might do is go into more depth on computer science. We love to read about computer science. If you did some sort of research project as an undergraduate, you say you published some paper, you were involved. We'd like to hear more about this in detail. And that's something we can't see in the rest of the application. If there was some coursework that really went into detail about a particular kind of, of computer science, a particular kind of activity, you, you might want to go into detail about that. This gives you a chance to show what you know in more depth and something about your interests in more depth. So I really encourage you to think about doing that. The last thing I'd like to say uh, relates a little bit to what Jonathan mentioned. We, uh, we, uh, we get a lot of applications that seem very scripted, that say the same kind of things, a lot of, of the same kind of anecdotes, actually uh, a lot of the same kind of terminology. You know, could they have been written with the help of an AI assistant? I don't know, but they, they read like they were. Uh, and you don't want this. I'd really uh, encourage you to be yourself. And occasionally, you know, I'm on the admissions committee, I'm looking over applications. I see something that jumps out for its its individuality for its unscriptedness. And this is something that we really pay attention to, something that can get you noticed. So uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'd like to say there's more contact information. It's roughly the same contact information that you've seen in previous slides.